Paul, it's such a pleasure to have you at WET today. You'll see that, that at WET, we're really a, a very much internally developed, uh, fully vertically integrated company. Uh, we start with concept design for our big water features like the Bellagio that we do and many others around the world. And we carry that through engineering. And then when there's a part that nobody's ever thought of before, some crazy underwater robot perhaps, we'll engineer that and then we'll manufacture it here. We started, I have to be honest with you, we started with one of your competitors and then in about 2008, my guys found Esprit. We've been an Esprit customer ever since. So Esprit Scam Software, as you know, we started back in 1982, just uh, two people, crazy engineers from France. And uh, we're probably the uh, leading uh, software when it comes to mill turn, multitasking, multi-channel type of machines. And we pride ourselves in providing customers with automation, with edit-free G-code, and also with excellent service. In the early days, we, we had a, a warranty problem on, on some of our lights. And the owner called me up and, and said, we're out of warranty. And I said, well, what's the problem? He told me, I said, well, that shouldn't have happened. He says, yeah, but we're out of warranty. He said, I don't care. I said, it's my, it's my light. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have failed for that. And we replaced him for him. And forevermore, you know, that, that's a customer. We look for partners who do the same thing with, with us. That's how you have to partner with people. We partner with the machine tool industry, generally speaking. And, and the reason why we do this is because we think that if you want to make a machine work and if you want to do edit-free G-code, that's where you have to start. We have a common objective and we do a lot of things together one of which is the design and the test of the post processor. Having the ability to visualize this machine tool and make sure that nothing collides, nothing bad's gonna happen on your machine when you go there and you run your program, all of those things are very important. Uh, I had a business consultant in, in the early days of the company and he said, Mark, you, you, you've got it focus on your core competency and outsource everything else. You know, if, if Pope Julius, when, when he was going to create uh, the Sistine Chapel, if he if he said, God, I got this idea for this ch chapel, Michael, but I can't really afford to put you up on that scaffold painting. Can you just give me some sketches and stuff? And, and I'll bring some folks over from, uh, you know, from uh, someplace else in the world who are really cheap and, and they'll, they'll paint it. I don't think we would have had the Sistine Chapel. And what's true for painting a piece of artwork is just as true for designing a machined part or a building or anything else. So we, we treat every single aspect at WET as a creative one. And that means that you think about it and you do it and you execute and you iterate and you learn. For us, uh, core competency is about creating toolpath. About 15 years ago, we didn't have any capabilities in, uh, in complex five axis. There was an outfit out there that provided an engine that you could integrate into your software that would do five axis. And we thought about it and we said, no, we need to own the expertise. We need to know how this works. And that's what we did. We made that decision early on. And today I could say that we have some of the best capabilities in five axis. We started using Spree in 2008 when we got our first uh, mill turn machines, uh, Morisikis. And at the time, uh, we were not that comfortable with doing mill turn. So we wanted to go with the best solution. And from our research that we did, we, uh, we found out that Spree is the, was the right tool to do uh, mill turn. We've been using it ever since and we never looked back after that. It's easier to deal with the toolpath that you want. Sometimes with other softwares, you have to mess around with them quite a bit before you get the right toolpath. And with Spree, we found out that you get the toolpath and it's right there, right there on the money. We uh, tend to uh, pick our more complex parts, multi-axis, multi-spindles, and five-axis machining, and do them with Spree because we know that we're gonna be doing a lot more with it. Stuff that we used to do before in multiple setups, multiple operations. We like to combine it now. We don't have to worry about, is this going to align 
to the other side or is this gonna be right? We know that when we do it in one cycle, we know it's gonna come out right. One thing we practice here is lean manufacturing. And one of the fundamental ideas of that is that you only need to make parts that you need now. I don't need to be making parts for stock or parts without demand. So we'll move parts around based off of those needs. When COVID first hit, we went to uh, limited staff uh, at the very beginning. We've opened back up since. We had to uh, be a little bit more nimble and change our processes, especially in the machine shop, to be able to get the same amount of work out with less staff. The uh, programming department using uh, Spree we're able to quickly modify programs to go from one machine to another machine based off availability of staff and, and equipment. When the COVID first hit us, I, I think like everyone, we probably under anticipated what the impact would be. We had a running advantage, the fact that we were so heavily invested in a spree software because as opposed to, to many of the folks in this country who outsourced so much of our manufacturing overseas, we, we kept it here and, and we said, let's focus on smart jobs like programming, right, like running these advanced machines. And the fact that your software deals so effectively with the posts and, you, you, and if we, we buy some, some pretty exotic machines that do a lot of things and, and with other software, sometimes they'll do 80, 90 percent, but you got to come in and tinker something and you got you to mess with it. And, and, and Kevin, who runs my shop, he, he says, you know, I, I can program at home. And this machine can run all day, you know, so, so that really helped us. Uh, I, I can't say we were anticipating a pandemic when, when we bought a spree, but it, it's given us a, a, a terrific leg up. And when I walk you through our shop, you'll see an aisle of machines with maybe one operator who, who can keep them going. So our jobs were set up, people were, were physically distanced to, to begin with. I think that in, in, in times of crisis like this, you have to be very pragmatic and, and make decisions as you move along and modify those decisions as the landscape changes and not so much run on principles because that could get you somewhere else that you don't want to go to. Everything has an end and that will end and something else will happen and we'll have better days for sure because it's always been like this. A mentor of mine, Alfred Moran, said something that I've never forgotten. He said, Mark, as a leader, you have one primary responsibility, really only one thing, and that's to provide hope for the future for all of those who look up to you as a leader. If you fail at that, you failed at everything. If you succeed at that, the rest will take care of itself. As human beings, we're resourceful. We've overcome unbelievable tyrannies in the past and, and wars and pandemics a whole lot worse than this. We have to focus on, yes, we will. We'll come out of this better and stronger, maybe a little different, but that's what we need to do as, as, as leaders to, to pull our own people and the world as a whole into the future, a positive future.